What's going on guys? Uh, welcome to part two of the threading series. Uh, this is actually a remake of the earlier threading part two video because I wasn't satisfied with the uh, video quality so I decided to remake this video. All right, so in this video we'll be creating multiple threads that run concurrently. Uh, this is going to be a simple example that shows us how to initialize multiple threads as opposed to the single thread we created in the first video. Uh, we will see the concurrency of multiple threads in action in this video. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to reuse the code from the first threading video. So in the first video we created a single thread and this was the code we used. Uh, so this is the code for the single thread and we started the thread and we started the thread by using p.start. So if we run this, um, as you can see, we get the uh, same output as we got. All right, uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I was interrupted by a uh, rain shower or, or sort of a rainstorm. So that has passed now, so we're good. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. We started our thread. So let me just start that again. Hi, I am thread one, going to sleep for five seconds. Um, and thread one has woken up from sleep. So we did this last video. So, you know, we know how this works. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a multitude of threads. So let's create about five different threads running concurrently um, using the sleeper function. The first thing we want to do is actually create a threads list. So we don't actually need to create a threads list. So I'm going to create an empty list here, but this thread list is going to hold our thread objects after we initialize them. Creating a list is not necessary, but as the amount of threads we work with get larger and larger, it, um, it requires a lot of uh, code. So the more threads we have, the more code we have to write. And by creating a threads list, we can actually save some time by reducing the amount of code we have to write. So that's why we're creating a threads list. Now we're going to decide how many threads we want. And I said something like five. So we'll start off with five. So what we do is we're going to run a for loop. Okay, so we're going to have five iterations within this for loop, and each iteration is going to create a thread. So for i in range invalid syntax, oh, oops, for i in range uh, five. And what I want to do is uh, pretty much the same thing we did last time, target us equals sleeper. Now here's a slightly tricky part. Actually, let me just put the name in the next portion. Name equals, now... Here, what we want to do is use some uh, string formatting. So, uh, let's see, here we go. Dot format, and inside, we're going to use i. So, because we're going to be creating five instances of threads, and we don't want the threads to have the same uh, name. If we just left it as thread1, then all five of the threads will be named thread1. So, in this case, we're going to use string formatting and name them in accordance with the uh, iteration. And now what we have left is uh, the arg. So we've done this before. We have, um, we have to put the, uh, the seconds we want our thread to sleep, and then we want to add the thread name, which is going to be the same thing, uh, the same line as above. So I could have just copied and pasted, but uh, I just figured I would just type it. So args is five, and this is the thread name that we're going to use as the parameters for our sleeper function. Oops, sleeper. So yeah, that looks good, I think. Let me just make sure. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to start. We're going to start each thread which, with each iteration, and then we'll just have a print statement saying um, has started format, and then we can have, since we have already created instances of threads, we can actually call the threads by their uh, name. So we can actually use the uh, t.name attribute. Okay, okay, so this looks good. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure all five threads end um, before we move back to the main thread or before we uh, continue with the rest of our uh, program. So the way we're going to do that is for i in threads list, or actually for t in threads list. So for each thread uh, within this thread list, what we're going to do is t.join. 
So that's one of the reasons uh, we have this thread list. If we didn't have this thread list, we'd have to create five different um, instances of threads with different names. In this case, since we have a, a list, we can sort of dump everything into the list and easily call each element within the list. So, um, so for t in threads list, t.join. So what's going to happen here is we're going to be blocking uh, Python from accessing the main thread or the main program until all five threads have finished their task. So after they're done, we can print something like all five tasks have uh, finished their jobs, or all five threads, sorry, threads have uh, finished their jobs. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we actually want to time this. So what I'm going to do is make sure we import a time, which I did, import time. So I'll just start it actually here before we create the thread objects. Start equals time dot time. Okay. Start equals time dot time. And the other thing I want to do is after join, okay, after t dot join, which is when all threads, all five threads complete their job, I want to use uh I want to create an end variable that's going to hold the time at that present uh, moment. All right, and then we'll just print um, time taken like this. We'll have a formatting dot format, and inside the, the brackets, we use something like end minus start. So this looks good. All right, so everything seems to look good. So let me just run this now. Um, actually, let me just uh, create this, clear the screen, and then we'll run this. Okay. As you can see, it's happening almost instantaneously. All five threads, zero, one, two, three, four, it just, hold on. Uh, that was a little quicker than I expected. Let me just run this again. Okay. Wait, why is time taking? Ah, silly me, I forgot to append. Okay, I made a very uh, simple mistake. I, see, right now we have an empty list. For T in threads list, actually, I forgot to append these, these T's into the list. So let me just uh, run that line t dot uh, threads list threads list dot append okay and we're going to append t so that should work now okay so I forgot to append and now let me uh, just clear the screen a few times and let's just run this again okay it's pretty much at the it seems like almost at the same time we have um, all five threads initializing so or starting, sorry, starting. So we have thread one, thread zero. Wait, why does it say thread one? Wait, why is it repeating thread one? Uh, let me make sure I'm not making a mistake. Yeah, so the reason why it's repeating thread one um, is because I forgot to get rid of uh, what I needed to comment out uh, was this portion. All right, sorry for the confusion, and now this should be good. And let's just run this, okay. Okay. So let's see. So thread zero has started. Thread one has started. Thread two has started. Uh, thread three, thread four, and thread five. Okay. So they're running pretty much um, concurrently. They're running at almost seems to be. They're not running in parallel. Remember, because of the gill, nothing can run in parallel. But they're running. They're running concurrently. So one after the other. One after the other. One after the other. And as you, as you can see, it only took five seconds for all five of them to sleep for five seconds and wake up. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to run the same code um, just for completion sake. We're going to run the same code without using threads. So let me see. So we're going to, um, we don't need to import time. And actually we can just copy, we can just copy this, uh, copy. And I'll paste this, okay, sleeper. And the only thing we need to do now, since we're not using threads, this is actually going to be much sleep, uh, much simpler. So what we can do is for i in range five, all we have to do is, or well, we can print, print something like has started, has uh, started. In this case, we're not using uh, threads. What we can do is iteration has started and what we can do is just uh, format and I. And then um, 
Yeah, and we'll just run sleeper, I guess. Sleeper. N will be five and named. Just to keep it simple, we'll just name it I. So I has um, started since we're not using threads. Yeah, so just to keep it simple, we use I, which will be the uh, uh, zero to four. And now what we want to do is, of course, we want to time everything. So, so what we want to do is we can do start equals time dot time. Uh, and then let me just copy this. And we'll have end equals time dot time and uh, we'll print out how long it took. So let me just, uh, now what we want to do is we want to comment out all of this. Control one. And if I run this, you'll see, of course, it's gonna take 25 seconds. So iteration, I spelled iteration wrong, but hi, I am one going to sleep. So one has started. Then two has started, three has started, four has started, and five. So the time it took was 25 seconds. So we know this. So we know that um, when we don't use any threads, Python will go uh, line by line and you can't run anything concurrently. But when, when you use threads, you can have threads in the background doing some tasks. Um, so the one thing I want to just I want you guys to remember is that uh, threads are not running in parallel. This is a very simple example with time. Um, what I wanted to actually show you was that when we're not doing anything CPU intensive, threads are very beneficial. So remember, the guild prevents us from using multiple uh, CPU processors. So whenever we're not doing anything uh, CPU intensive, uh, threads can be beneficial. Uh, threads are really efficient at uh, using any downtime or idle time. So when one thread is waiting for something, we can have another thread uh, perform a task. And just in our example, um, when one thread was sleeping, uh, that's considered idle time because we're not really using much of the CPU, uh, CPU's resources. Uh, Python will switch to another thread and then um, do some tasks with that thread. And if that thread is not doing something, we'll switch to another thread and then we'll switch to another thread and then we'll switch to make sure it's, um, the CPU is always busy. Things like uh, networking and web services are two types of operations where you have um, sort of these small idle times that can be made more uh, efficient using threads. Now, I personally like to have uh, threading events. I've made a video on events. Um, so I like to have them in the background, constantly checking for flags and communicating with each other. So the thread is always checking for something, um, and if some sort of event triggers uh, the flag, the thread will notify another thread, and then it will trigger a sense of uh, a series of events. So that's how I personally like to use uh, threads. Now, when you have CPU intensive stuff, there's actually something called multiprocessing, which I'll get into. Uh, first, I think I want to make a video on Gil, uh, just so you guys get a better understanding. But yeah, so this was just. Uh, a simple video on showing you how to initialize um, multiple threads and just to show you how uh, all these multiple threads work concurrently and how Python sort of uh, switches back and forth between each uh, thread pretty rapidly, especially when there's a uh, downtime. All right, so that's it with this video. I will see you guys next time.